Hello, and welcome to Beat the Nation, Sats Week 2, with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation? Well, thousands of students all around the country have taken some of my Sats mixed topic quizzes on my Diagnostic Questions website. And what I've done is I've gone into one of those quizzes and I found the three worst answered questions. The three questions that students around the country are having a bit of a nightmare with. And here they are in front of you now. Now I've got five challenges for you. Firstly, can you get each of these questions right? Now that's easier said than done, because as I say, these are questions that students are finding very, very difficult. And then I wonder if you could predict out of these three questions, which is the worst answered question? And then, and this is where it gets really tricky, what do you reckon the most popular choice of wrong answer for each of these three questions is? And then can you get inside the mind of students and predict why might they have chosen these wrong answers? And then finally, and this is probably the biggest challenge of them all, how would you help someone out who has these misconceptions, who thinks that these questions, the right answers, when in fact that they're actually wrong? What I suggest you do is you pause this video at this stage and work through these five challenges based around these three questions. And then when you're ready, unpause it and we'll go through the answers together. Good luck. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one, let's go through it. So what I'm gonna to do to build up a bit of drama, I'm gonna reveal the least worst answered question out of these three first. And it is this one here, the subtraction question. Which digits will change when I subtract 20 from 10,000? Now, when I've got a subtraction question, I always like to write it out. So let's just do it here. So I've got 10,000 and I'm gonna subtract 20, and I'm always careful to line up my digits. Now, before we dive into this, what's our instincts say? Which digits are gonna change? I mean, they're not gonna change, zero takes zero. This is gonna definitely change though, and then it maybe it looks like these digits aren't gonna change because there's nothing to subtract from. So is it the case that just one of these digits will change? I'm not so sure, because of course, when I try to subtract this two or two lots of 10 from here, I'm gonna to need to do something with these other digits to help me along the way. So let's take a look. Zero subtract zero is zero. And then it depends how we want to think about this. We can talk about borrowing. I know some people don't like to talk about borrowing. We can, we can say, well, we've, 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 we can't take two away from zero here. So do we borrow from here? Do we borrow from here? Do we borrow from here? We can do all that kind of thing. But to be honest with you, when I've got a load of zeros like this, it can get a bit confusing. You've got nines bombing around, crossing out things left, right, and center. So let's just pause and think what we're doing here. We're doing 10,000 subtract 20. Well, I think I know what the answer to that is, you know. 10,000 subtract 20. I think I'm gonna be left with 9,980. Now, is there any way I can check that that's right? Well, yeah, I can. I can just add these two on. I can do 9,980, add on 20 and see what I get. Zero plus zero, zero. Two plus eight gives me my 10. If I carry my one down, nine plus one gives me my 10. Carry my one down, nine plus one gives me my 10. So 10,000 subtract 20 is 9,980. So which of the digits have changed there? Well, that's not changed. That's changed. That's changed. And that's changed. So I think the thousands digits have changed, the hundreds digits and the tens digits. So the only digit that hasn't changed are the ones. So I think the correct answer to this question is D. Let's see if we're right. Whew. Good news, we are right, but look at that, only 62% of students agree with us that that's the correct answer. Look at the other answers, 18% have gone for A, all the digits will change. Why might students think that? Well, here's an actual student explanation for that. All the digits will change because you subtract 20, which affects, which affects the ones and the tens. And because it affects the tens, it also affects the hundreds, which affects the thousands and so on. Now that's absolutely right. I really love this logic down here, but I'm not just so sure about that. I don't think it does affect the ones column because we've got zero ones there, and we've also got zero ones in 10,000. So it's gonna affect all the digits apart from the ones. How did you get on with that question? 
Okay, let's take a look at the second least worst answered question. And it is this one here, perimeter. The perimeter of the rectangle is 24. Find the missing width. Okay, so we've got ourselves a rectangle. And we know for a fact that when we do this side plus this side plus this side plus this side, our answer has to be 24. We know that. And we also know that this side here is eight. I'm gonna leave the units off now, but we're talking centimeters. And because it's a rectangle, we also know that this side here is eight. Now we don't know what this side is yet. And also we don't know what this side is, but what we do know of course, is that these two sides have to be equal to each other, just as those two sides are equal to each other. So let's think what we've got here. We've got eight plus eight, plus something that we don't know, plus something else that we don't know has to equal 24. I think we can tidy this up a little bit. Eight plus eight is 16. And then we've actually got two lots of these things that we don't know what they are equal to 24. So what must this equal? So 16 plus two lots of something must equal 24. Well, I think that means that this two lots of something, this mystery thing must be eight, right? Because 16 plus eight gives me 24. So two lots of this mystery thing must give me eight. So I think that this mystery length, the only thing it can be is four. But I'll tell you what, and this is the beauty of when you solve problems like this. You don't have to, you don't have to just stick at that and hope you're right. We can check, let's put it back in. So I'm claiming that the answer, that these sides are a length four. Does that work? Eight plus four is 12, plus another eight is 20, plus four is 24, which is the answer we, we, we want it to be. So I think that means our answer to this question is C, four centimeters. Let's see if we're right, and then let's see what other students thought the answer was. Phew, we've got it right, okay? 61% of students agreed with us, but look at that, 20% of students think the answer's A, three centimeters. Now, where on earth does that answer three centimeters come from? Can you see that? Why would a student think that that side was three? Well, look at that. What's eight multiplied by three gives us 24. And in the words of the student, look at that. A is correct because to find the perimeter, you must multiply the length by the width. Well, we know that's not true. What, what's that student muddling up? They're muddling up perimeter with how you work out the area of a rectangle. A classic misconception there. Okay, What's the worst answered question? Well, it's the only one left, it's this one here. The area of a square is 100 centimeters squared. What is the length of one of the sides? Well, I'll tell you what, let's use a similar technique that we used with that rectangle before. We know that the area of this is 100 centimeters squared. What we don't know are the sides, but we do know that when we do that side multiplied by that side, we're gonna get the area, which is 100, because we know that's how you work out the areas of squares. So something times something gives us 100. Now there's lots of things that that could be. Two times 50 would work, four times 25 would work. But of course, we know that it's a square. So we know that this length and this length must be the same. So we're looking for two numbers that are the same that multiply together to make 100. Well, I reckon I know what those numbers are. 10 times 10 gives me 100. How do I know that? Well, because I know the square root of 100 is equal to 10. So have I got my answer there? Well, wait a minute, C is 10 and D is 10, so which one's right? Well, it's asking about the length, and lengths are in centimeters. So the answer, I reckon, is D. Look at that, centimeters squared, that would be to do with area. So I'm going for D, am I right? Yes, but look at that, 45% of students got that right. More than half of the students got it wrong. And a lot of those students went for A. A, 25 centimeters. Where's 25 come from? How on earth could the answer be 25? Well, let's have a think what they've done there. That's not a very good square, but if that was 25 and that was 25 and that was 25 and that was 25, what's the student done there? 
Well, let's read one of their explanations. Oh, sorry. I know this is the answer because the square has four equal sides. That's a good start. So this means you need to look at how many sides there are. Four, okay. And because all the sides are equal, you divide four by 100. Uh-oh. And this will give you the answer of 25 centimeters. Not quite. I think what they've done here, they've added the sides together. They've worked out the perimeter. It's almost the opposite mistake as we saw in the previous question when they muddled up area and perimeter the other way around. So we've got to be careful. Area and perimeter are different things and we've got to be on the ball reading the questions carefully to make sure we know what we're talking about each time. How did you get on with those three questions? Don't worry if you found them tricky. As we saw, thousands and thousands of students also found them tricky. But hopefully you've got a good way in to start thinking about it now. Um, if you want to try more of these quizzes out, there's loads of them. They're all completely free. Just go to my Diagnostic Questions website. That's diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019. And you can try those out. And if you're a teacher and you want to set these uh, quizzes for your students, so they'll be automatically marked and so on. Um, it's all completely free. You can do it so it automates them so they get them one a week and so on. The easiest uh, place to go there is ed.co.uk. And if you need help setting up your students on the system so they can receive these quizzes and answer them on any device, send the team an email um, hello at ed.co.uk with a spreadsheet attached with your students' names and classes. And I'll see you for more Beat the Nation soon. Bye for now.